video games. They're changing how we play, learn, and connect with one another. Now the time has come to honor those video games that are the most widely recognized and remembered. Games that have enjoyed long popularity. Games that hold significance throughout the world. Influencing other games, entertainment, and popular culture. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the induction ceremony for the World Video Game Hall of Fame. Welcome to the fourth annual World Video Game Hall of Fame induction ceremony live from the Strong Museum in Rochester, New York. Home to the world's largest collection of toys, dolls, video games, games, and other play-related artifacts. I'm John Paul Dyson, director of the Strong's International Center for the History of Electronic Games. We're delighted to welcome members of the museum's board of trustees, members of the World Video Game Hall of Fame Induction Selection Advisory Committee, museum members, representatives of the media, and those watching live on Twitch from around the globe. For those of you who, who are using social media throughout the induction, we're using the hashtag Video Game Hall. The museum's Twitter handle is at Museum of Play, and its Instagram handle is Museum of Play Rock. Today's induction is a lead-in to a weekend full of family fun that celebrates past inductees to the hall, including The Sims, Pac-Man, and The Legend of Zelda, as well as the new inductees that we're introducing today. We invite all of you to join us for the activities this coming Saturday and Sunday here at The Strong. Everything we do at The Strong is founded on the understanding that play is critical to learning and human development. Electronic games especially have changed how people play, learn, and connect with each other across boundaries of culture and geography. Through the World Video Game Hall of Fame, The Strong recognizes games of all types arcade, console, computer, mobile, and handheld, that have enjoyed popularity over a sustained period and have exerted influence on the video game industry or in popular culture in general. This year, 12 games meeting the basic criteria were considered by the International Selection Advisory Committee. Those games are Asteroids, Call of Duty, Dance Dance Revolution, Final Fantasy VII, Half-Life, John Madden Football, King's Quest, Metroid, Minecraft, Ms. Pac-Man, Space War, and Tomb Raider. It's a fabulous list that gave our judges quite a challenge. In a moment, my colleagues, Jeremy Saucier and Shannon Simons, will help me announce the 2018 class of the World Video Game Hall of Fame. Following the announcement, Jeremy, Shannon, and I will be available for questions and interviews. Now, let's welcome our first inductee. Computers, from laptops to smartphones, are so woven into our lives that it's hard to remember that they were once rare, costly, and inaccessible to most people. It was only at the end of World War II that scientists, engineers, and programmers developed the first hulking computers to solve complex problems like breaking codes and boosting rockets. These were serious machines for serious purposes. But the instinct to play is universal. So it's not surprising that programmers began writing simple games like checkers and chess. In 1961, when a new DEC PDP-1 minicomputer arrived at MIT, people like Steve Russell were eager to see what it could do. Russell created a game involving two dueling spaceships appropriate for a time when the United States was, was competing with the Soviet Union for control of outer space. These spaceships fought in cosmic combat, firing torpedoes while circling a star whose gravitational pull threatened instant destruction. As Russell worked with others to perfect the game in 1962, players flocked to it, 
sneaking into MIT's computer lab to play it off hours and as often as possible. No one had ever experienced anything like this before. Over the next decade, it spread to computer systems worldwide. Everywhere, people had the same reaction. It was fun. Modders added new features, but its core gameplay of dueling spaceships remained so compelling that it became the subject of the first video game journalism, appearing in Rolling Stone magazine. More importantly, it inspired Nolan Bushnell, the founder of Atari, to create an arcade version in 1971 that kickstarted the, the arcade game revolution of the 1970s and 1980s. So, the first inductee into the 2018 class of the World Video Game Hall of Fame is a title that half a century ago helped launch the video game revolution. It's Space War. If Space War's dueling ships helped lay the foundation for today's $100 billion video game industry, our next inductee built an empire of its own on pixels and passes. First released by Electronic Arts in 1988, this game's initial focus on strategy and statistical modeling left it floundering in the PC game marketplace. But its 1990 reboot which transformed the virtual gridiron into an action game that centered on the drama of individual player confrontations, became an instant hit on home consoles and redefined modern sports video games. In this game, agile running backs broke tackles to fight for extra yards, and powerful linebackers sacked quarterbacks with bone-crushing hits. That emphasis on action and EA's approach to highly anticipated annual game releases modeled a path to success for franchises and other sports, such as soccer, hockey, and basketball. This game and its subsequent releases have also influenced professional football, where players, coaches, and television broadcasters have benefited from or been inspired by its exhilarating gameplay and striking camera angles. Indeed, players who grace the game's annual cover are celebrated for having reached a new level of stardom. And the former Super Bowl winning coach and television commentator who helped create the game is now more synonymous with video games than with professional football. So get your helmets and your shoulder pads ready, because the second inductee into the 2018 class of the World Video Game Hall of Fame is John Madden Football. Now a word from some special friends of ours. Favorite Madden game? Every Madden game is a favorite. As a football player, as a player, as a fan of the game, you know, you, you, know, you look forward to the summer times, that new Madden. I had Madden tournaments in my house every week. Every week. And nobody couldn't beat me. Back in the mid-90s when I was playing Madden, um, you know, it was such you know, it was, it was the new thing, and uh, you know, it was so fun because I loved playing, and I loved playing all the sports games, but Madden was, you know, the best of the best. It's a training tool. I really think it's a training tool. Life. It teaches principles, you know, teamwork, you know, hard work. Teach discipline. Respectful. You know, to understand the strategy is things that I find people are really fascinated with. And it's one thing to watch the game and enjoy it. It's another to understand the strategy of the game and why you do what you do with certain players. And that's all incorporated into the game. So you can be the coach, you can be the general manager, you can, you know, deal with the different adversities and different game management situations, you know, while still playing a game. So I think all those things really serve you well. Uh, thank you, Coach Madden. Thank you, John Madden. If I was to see you, I'd give you a big hug. Hey, John Madden, 
How's business? Bowman. Thank you. So far this year, we've blasted ships in outer space and scored touchdowns on football fields. Now, let's remain on Earth, but travel to a different sort of venue, one filled with dark caves, sharp cliffs, rushing rivers, and treasures beyond our imaginations. Released in 1996, our next inductee took advantage of revolutionary advancements in graphic design and presented players with a cinematic 3D gaming experience that combined the best of action, adventure, platforming, and puzzle solving. Inspired in part by blockbuster films like Raiders of the Lost Ark, precision demanding platform games like Prince of Persia, and the real life archeological discoveries of the Tomb of King Tut, developers comp completed a complex, multi-layered environment that allowed players to jump, climb, slide, and swim their way through the game. But as we all know, sometimes what we do in video games isn't nearly as important as who we're doing it with. And in this case, the game's lead protagonist quickly took center stage. Styled as a female Indiana Jones, the character of Lara Croft blasted onto the gaming scene, dual-wielding pistols, scaling perilous mountains, and proving herself every bit the traditional action hero, or heroine. Though not without controversy due to her overstated sex appeal, Lara Croft has evolved into a complex, multi-layered character who is still the most well-recognized female video game character of all time. This is due in no small part to her blockbuster film portrayal by Angelina Jolie and the actress's almost uncanny resemblance to the character. Thanks to her extreme popularity with male and female gamers alike, Lara Croft proved that a female character wasn't just fun to play, she could also sell games. So grab the nearest jungle vine and get ready to swing into action with our next inductee, Tomb Raider. Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce Katie Swindlehurst, brand coordinator from the Crystal Dynamics team on behalf of Square Enix. Core Design was the developer of the original Tomb Raider game, a game that launched one of the most iconic heroes of all time, Lara Croft. Crystal Dynamics and IDOS Montreal are incredibly humbled and thrilled to be responsible for the development of this monumental franchise. On behalf of both studios, thank you so much for this honor. I have brought a short video from Scott Amos and Ron Rosenberg, head of studio at Crystal Dynamics. Unfortunately, they couldn't be here today, but they would like to extend their gratitude. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ron Rosenberg. And I'm Scott Amos. We're the co-heads of studio of Crystal Dynamics. We're thrilled to accept the Strong Museum's induction of Tomb Raider into the Video Game Hall of Fame. We are honored that Lara Croft and Tomb Raider as a franchise are being recognized for the transcendent impact they've had on all forms of media, from comics and books, to films, and of course, video games. And most importantly, we want to thank the fans. And on behalf of those fans, and on all the developers worldwide, both past and present, thank you. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to pause here, I'm sorry. Um, Everyone tells me that I have the best job in the world, being a curator for electronic games, and that's, that's true. But what I'm gonna do next really makes it the best part of my job. Because ever since we started this World Video Game Hall of Fame, I've been wanting to induct this game. And now I get to do it. And sometimes JP and Jeremy and I, we fight over who gets to induct what game. There was no fight. There was just Shannon gets to do this. The end. So. 
I'm sorry, but I had to say that because this is awesome. <laughs> In 1987, Japanese developer Square released a role-playing game designed by Hironobu Sakaguchi, spinning a tale of mages and mighty heroes destined to save the world. Ten years later, this game's sequels and other Japanese RPGs like them still only enjoyed a relatively small amount of popularity amongst mainstream gamers. That all changed in 1997, when a spiky-winged mercenary and a corrupt one-winged angel blasted onto the international scene in the seventh iteration of Square's franchise. The game originally began production on the Super Famicom, and the Japanese-only release of the Nintendo 64 disk drive. But cutting-edge 3D graphics and elaborate full-motion video cutscenes would have resulted in a whopping 30 N64 discs while Sony could produce it on a mere three CD-ROMs for its brand new PlayStation. In addition to its technological achievements, players latched on to the game's memorable characters. The devilishly handsome Sephiroth remains one of the most popular villains in gaming history, and protagonist Cloud Strife's oversized buster sword became one of gaming's most recognizable weapons. The poignant death of beloved character Aerith let it to become known as one of the most tear-jerking video games of all time. Thanks to an unprecedented marketing blitz that had developer Square teaming up with the likes of DC, Marvel, and Pepsi, this title became the second best vid selling video game on the PlayStation, and is still considered by players and critics alike to be one of the best video games ever created. This popularity shows no sign of waning, as proven when Sony and Square Enix brought an ecstatic audience to its feet during the 2015 E3 conference by announcing a long sought after high definition remake of the game. This might be the last member of the 2018 Class of the World Video Game Hall of Fame, but you can bet it's anything but final. Put your hands together for Final Fantasy VII. And now, please enjoy this video from Yoshinori Kitase of Square Enix, who has written, directed, and produced Final Fantasy games since 1991, and is currently leading the production of the long-awaited Final Fantasy VII Remake. Final Fantasy VII Director, and Final Fantasy VII Remake Producer, Kitase Yoshinori. Today, we have the A ワールドビデオゲームホールブヘムに、えー、開発一同代表して感謝の意を、えー、伝えさせていただきたいと思いますイベント会場には直接伺うことはできないのですがファイナルファンタジーセミに対する、えー、ファンの、えー、溢れんばかりの、えー、愛に非常に感銘を受けております20年以上前の作品にもなるんですがこのように、えー、賞賛と表彰をいただくことで非常に驚きを隠せません現在ね、私は「ワイナルファンタジー7」リメイクを制作しているんですがこのような栄養をいただき非常に励みになると考えております改めまして今回の表彰と栄養に関して、えー、ありがとうございました So it's official the inductees into the fourth class of the World Video Game Hall of Fame are Final Fantasy VII, Space War, Tomb Raider, and John Madden Football. We'd like to thank Katie Swindlehurst for being here and the teams from EA Sports and Square Enix for their videos. Thank you also to the International Selection Advisory Committee and the thousands of players worldwide that voted for the Player's Choice ballot. We're also happy to announce that the World Video Game Hall of Fame will be publishing a book with HarperCollins, A History of Video Games and 64 Objects, which will, will be available everywhere books are sold on May 29th. Now, Jeremy Saucier, Shannon Simons, and I will be available for questions and interviews. You're also welcome to experience versions of some of the inducted games throughout the World Video Game Hall of Fame display on the museum's second floor. Thank you all again for joining us this morning 
and congratulations to the 2018 class of the World Video Game Hall of Fame.